Hello again, welcome to another of our training sessions. We're going to look at following a process for charting data to a timeline chart from iBase. We'll touch on how you control the way in which the data is sent across into the resulting chart. Then we'll look at some quick tips to make charts look good for presenting. We're using a virtual environment, Amazon Workspaces, which can be accessed from a variety of computers, including Windows, Mac and Linux. We use this environment for our online training courses. I have the iBase application open. This is our shortest path training database. In order to populate suitable chart styles containing relevant data, our training database has some labelling schemes, which were set up by our designer, but users can also create and modify them. Labelling schemes allow users to decide what fields will populate a chart items label in Analyst Notebook, iBase link charts, or the results returned in iBase, such as from a query or find. Secondly, we need to be aware of what charting schemes do. We also have a couple of charting schemes available. These control the other ways in which iBase sends data to an Analyst Notebook chart. For example, do I want pictures on the chart? How about attributes? Do I require my records to be charted in sequence? If so, date and time needs to be set up to chart appropriately. As there are suitable schemes in this database, we can proceed to chart some of the data. It's worth noting that there are various ways to chart data from iBase. This is just one method. Step one is to connect to Analyst Notebook. Here's a splash screen telling us that we are connected to the iBase database. In order to interact with the database, I'll open up the Data Sources pane. This is found under Connect, Data Sources pane. Here's the name of our connected database. For step two, we'll need to ensure that we've set up suitable association and timeline options. You can note that I have a few combination settings for different chart purposes. Let's take a look at my timeline charting settings. In here, I've already chosen my required charting scheme, labelling scheme and charting style, which is a timeline. Step three is when we locate the data for charting. Now, instead of returning to iBase to find it, I can communicate with the application directly in the data sources pane. Here, I'll create a new query. For this task, we're interested in some chat room data. The structure of my database consists of username, messages, linked with a message type link. I want to locate all messages with the content containing wiki leak. In order to quickly jump to the required field content and the operator contains, I just pressed C on my keyboard and it jumped to it in the list. There are two usernames that have posted message in relation to WikiLeak. When I head back to the query structure, I can adjust the output so that it is on the link, the username and the message with output all. I have 10 results. In the bottom left hand corner, I'll select all, right mouse click and add to charts. There's the option to finish and save the query for reuse in future or to cancel it. I'm going to cancel. We'll fit to window. 
This is a timeline chart. It has placed my events in sequential order. I'm interested in finding out a little bit more about the messages. I'm going to deselect everything on the chart. Head up to select and choose item type. Here I can quickly just select the messages. Let's say we'd like to find out whether there's any documents linked to these messages in my database. Best practice is to use a tool called Expand with Settings. It's found under Selection. Expand with Settings will only add the relevant entity and or link types you require to your chart. I'll deselect all and I'm just going to include document. There is one source document that is linked to all four of these messages. I'm going to move it between those two user theme lines. As we have some social media types available in the template, we can change the entity types so they look more reflective to the data types. Back up to item type, I'm going to choose message. Then under style, I have the option to adjust the type of entities. Under drop down palette, I'm going to choose social media and select message post. An alternative way of changing the type of entities quickly is to head up to home use the palette and providing the suitable representation is selected, in this example it's theme line, I can search for the type I'd like to use. User. This one looks suitable. I'm going to select it. Hover over the theme line and drop it when the replacement symbol appears. The document relates to a log of data. I'd like to replace it with a computer log theme line. I'd like to emphasise or colour code each user. I'll select the first, go to style and then adjust the shading to say a blue colour. Let's repeat that for the second user. We can resize event frames by selecting and then moving left or right with our mouse on the symbol. An alternative way of selecting items quickly on your chart is to hold down the left button on your mouse and then just drag around those of interest. Event frames by default have their pins switched on. Under style and display, I have the option to switch the pin off. Usually event frames look more attractive without pins for presentation purposes. Let's say this event here is of particular interest. We can highlight it by using the fill option. This is also available under style. Additionally, we can add line color. and adjust the line width. We have the option to emphasise fonts such as bolding 
adjusting the colour or adding shading. As all these messages occurred on the same day, I'm going to adjust the date and time format so that we just have the time visible with hour and minutes. Once again, I'm going to drag around those items of interest. Right mouse click on a selected item and combine the properties. For the event frames to display, and instead of the format being system, date and time, I'm going to choose one that will display the hour and the minute in 24 hour format. There we go. I can select the theme line icons and then drag them in the position that I wish them to be. And then to neaten up the chart, I can head up to Arrange and apply a layout. Here we have the theme line layout. It equally spaces the theme lines on our charts. And we also have the ordered layout over here. This one equally spaces out our events. For the last stage in our process, we're going to present the chart. Under Publish, we have the option to spell check, add legends. We could save the chart as a picture or as a PDF. But what I'm going to do is take a snapshot of it. I'm going to capture the current view of the chart. And I'd like to present it on a PowerPoint slide. Here, I have the option to export to PowerPoint. I'll give it a name. And there we go. We hope that our training sessions have been insightful during this event. We'd love to hear from you, including any feedback you may have. So please do get in touch. Thank you very much.